<laughs> Thank you so much, uh, President Rock, faculty, of course, Dean Lefkovich. Uh, most of all, I want to thank and congratulate all of you, this fabulous graduation class of 2014. I have to say right off the bat, I definitely want that red chair moved to the CTV National Newsroom. I would love to do the news from that chair. <laughs> Ça me fait beaucoup de plaisir d'être ici. C'est un grand honneur pour moi d'être parmi vous aujourd'hui. It, it is such an honor to receive this doctorate. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I did accuse Dean Tony of uh, having asked Alec Trebek first. Um, you know, the host of Jeopardy was also a University of Ottawa graduate. Tony assured me, though, that I was wrong. Apparently, there was some concern that he would give the entire convocation speech in the form of a question. <laughs> you have just graduated from a prestigious Canadian university. Now, what are you going to do with your life? That is probably the most stressful question rolling around in your brain right now, especially with your parents within earshot. I understand that. Je me souviens bien ma graduation de l'Université d'Ottawa il y a 26 ans. Uh, la classe a été beaucoup plus petite, mais on a eu la même question, qu'est-ce que tu vas faire avec ta vie? In fact, I remember so vividly that day when I graduated, not too far from here, it was just over the Laurier Bridge on the lawn of Tabaret. The weather was a lot better in the 80s. <laughs> Keep in mind, as I say, it was a long time ago, back when an apple was something that you ate, there were no iPhones or iPads. The communications department had a room in the basement with about 20 computers, and you had to book them in advance to type up a paper. It was basically a communal Commodore 64. And uh, we had no laptops, no cell phones. We used to walk around the uni center with something called a Sony Walkman. Uh, it was a tape deck that could single-handedly elevate your level of cool uh, beyond belief. Like I said, it was a long time ago, and we were a much smaller graduating class. Uh, nonetheless, that day, I was terrified. For four years, I knew what I was, a university student. Far from my hometown of Kitchener-Waterloo, I had a purpose. I was getting a degree in the arts, in communication, in the nation's capital. But that day, graduation day, something suddenly was over, and I was about to embark on something that scared the hell out of me. Moving back into my parents' home <laughs> and living in their basement for the rest of my God-given days. Anybody share that fear? Come on, be honest. <laughs> et de tout ce que vous avez accompli. We've already done a shout out to your parents and supporters here, but they are also giddy at the fact that you will soon be financially independent. Now, I have thought a lot about, <laughs> I hear the parents clapping at that one. <laughs> I've thought a lot about what I wanted to say to you today. It is such a significant day and such a significant year, the 125th anniversary of the Faculty of Arts. I thought about all of the students who've graduated from this school over all these years. History is in the very fabric of the gowns that you are wearing today. I'm assuming that they've been dry cleaned. Vous ne le réalisez peut-être pas tout à fait, mais l'histoire fait partie intégrale de cette institution, de la place qu'elle prend au sein de notre pays et une réflexion de la réalité canadienne. Elle célèbre nos cultures anglophones et francophones, nos traditions, notre courage. And I decided I wanted to talk to you about courage today because it is so top of mind for me right now because I saw it so clearly this week. I was in Moncton, New Brunswick, covering the tragic funeral of three Canadian Mounties. Are there any graduates here from Moncton, from New Brunswick? A few hands going up. Uh, you should be so proud of how your hometown welcomed this entire country into their private grief, doors and hearts as wide open as the wound that this senseless tragedy has left behind. 
The courage that I saw, though, wasn't just in the lives of those three brave Mounties who'd taken an oath to serve and protect so that we wouldn't have to. It was in the strangers that I met on the streets. It reminded me that a person isn't born with courage. They develop it by doing small, courageous things, things that cost you some mental exertion. Today, you are all courageous. It takes willpower and it takes guts and discipline to do the work required to end up with a university degree in your hand. These last few years, you have certainly consumed more than your body weight in caffeine. You have made the grade and you sit here today ready to go out in the world. And I know that that sounds intimidating, but you cannot give in to that fear. You have to figure out a way to harness the nervous energy and let it drive you. You are about to take on a new adventure into the unknown. And I say unknown because from here on in, the things that come your way, the people, the experiences, all of this will shape and reshape your point of view. I can't tell you how many times my point of view has changed through the adventures and misadventures that I have experienced. All of it has taught me something, even if the lesson is how little I know and how much I still have to learn. It's only when you finish up your formal education that the real work begins. Learning no longer becomes just for the sake of knowing so that you can ace an exam. Now it's about knowing so that you can make a difference as a citizen of the world. It's no secret in this world of 24-hour news online and on TV that the world is in a bit of a mess right now. I actually always find it kind of strange that I start every newscast with good evening and then I spend the next 30 minutes telling you why it wasn't. Now, I, I have had a front row seat to a lot of that mess wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, the Arab Spring, earthquakes, tsunamis, and this week, Moncton. It has been a long list of human suffering and an overwhelming example, time and again, of human strength. People always say, you know, don't get emotional, don't get upset, don't take it personally, but I am begging you today, if you look around and see what's happening in the world, I'm begging you to take it personally. I look across this theater today. Without a doubt, this is one of the most beautiful things I have seen in, in a very long time, a room full of marvelous minds, eager and armed with an education that can help you make a difference and help you find success. Mais le secret de succès, c'est bien plus que l'éducation. It is not defined by education alone. There are a few intangible tools that you have to awaken and cultivate to make that happen. Your gut instinct about what's right and wrong. Your intuition about people, about loyalty. And the one I think is the most important, compassion and empathy, not just for your family, your relationship or your colleagues and friends, but for the world. These tools, especially empathy, fold into making you more than an observer. Uh, in my job, it's true, I've been privileged to spend a lot of time with some of the most inspiring yet oppressed people in the world, in the Congo, refugee camps in the Middle East, in Iraq, in Afghanistan. One of those girls is here today, Roya Shams from Kandahar, and it, it's inspiring for me that Roya should be here. Girls that are desperate for an education, that know that if they live to graduate, like you are today, it will be against all odds. Think of those schoolgirls in Nigeria. The threat of kidnapping always hung over those schools. But getting an education is a risk they take because they believe they can make a difference. And I'm sure right now Tony is thinking, oh, this speech is such a downer. <laughs> Alex Trebek would have been so great. <laughs> <laughs> but I am telling you this for a very important reason. I want you to grasp how fortunate you are to be here today in this country and in this school with 125 years of history that has your back. 
That is a very, very rare thing in this world, and you are very fortunate. You know, the, there is a hidden attachment, though, to uh, your degree today. It's the wonderful burden of choice. Um, having an interesting life is definitely the option that I would recommend, uh, but it isn't easy, and it brings me to the next secret, which is passion. I want to give you some advice today that somebody once gave me. Find a job you love, don't stop until you do, and go at it with complete passion and enthusiasm. It is definitely one of the best pieces of advice I've ever received. I mean, right now you may want to be an investment banker because you're good at it and the money's pretty good too, but you actually have a passion for writing or art or politics. Too many people figure out too late in life that they took the wrong road professionally because they followed a paycheck and not their passion. When they do figure it out, believe me, it's called a midlife crisis and it will cost you. <laughs> the bottom line is you have to love what you do. You have to have a passion for it. You have to believe in it and ask yourself, why am I really doing this? And listen to the answer, listen to yourself. When I was at the University of Ottawa, again, 26 years ago, volunteering at CFUO Radio and writing for the Fulcrum, I actually even worked here as a part-time job at the NAC, and I worked as an overnight switchboard operator at Thompson Residence. Now that was an education. <laughs> <laughs> but a whole different speech. Um, I, I dreamed, though, in those days. I actually dreamed of having the job I have today. But it was a long time coming, and nothing comes easy. I'm not saying that even if you do love your job, there aren't times when you get frustrated, disillusioned, angry, or scared. But that is passion, too. I've questioned my career choices plenty of times. There really is no perfect picture. Instead, there are trade-offs, and only you know if the trade-offs are worth it. Quand on est vraiment soi-même, tout est possible. When you're true to yourself, things fall into their rightful place. I have always believed that motivation trumps talent, and character almost always trumps genius. Almost always. Unless, of course, you're going to be a neurosurgeon, then genius is pretty damn important. So, so much has been written about motivation and truth from Shakespeare on down, so you'll forgive me if I quote a journalist. The late Edward R. Murrow offered up some pretty valuable advice that I think you should all know. To be persuasive, he said, you must be believable. To be believable, you must be credible. And at the core, to be credible, you must be truthful. So if your choice is banking or teaching or trapeze flying, be true to yourself and use your tools, honesty, loyalty, passion. Believe me, the consequences of ignoring them will eventually catch up with you. I am convinced that the key to a successful life, or actually even better, a rewarding life, is to pour yourself into causes that are greater than yourself, whether that cause is halfway around the world or the soup kitchen down the street. As civil rights leader Benjamin Mays once said, the tragedy in life does not lie in reaching your goal. The tragedy lies in having no goal to reach. Well, you guys have reached this goal, and you should be so proud. Sois fier, vos familles sont fier de vous, Félicitations, you did it, and trust me, believe me, listen to me, the best days of your life are still ahead of you. Congratulations. <laughs>